Devam ediyoruz efendim. Yeni bir konuşmacımız var. Bu sefer konuşmacımız yurt dışından gelecek ve önemli keynote speakerlerimizden bir tanesi. Yapay zeka teknolojileri lideri MindMaze'in patronu kendisi. Büyük alkışlarda Martin Tiupa geliyor. Yapay zeka artificial intelligence konusunda bizi bilgi sahibi yapmak üzere. Hello. How are you? So. Uh, we cannot hear you. Is it switched on? I think it's closed. Let me let me check just quick. It's closed. Uh, Sizce arkadaşlarımız, şuradan. Maybe I can handle it. I can see it, uh, but I don't know how how it works. Uh -huh. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. to be. Am I on? Okay. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So, I have just 20 minutes, I have quite a few slides, so I'm going to go through fairly quickly. I hope uh, that will be fine. So, here we are. My name is Martin Chuper. I'm the uh, Chief Artificial Intelligence Officer of MindMaze, a Swiss neurotechnology company interested in building neuro rehabilitation tools for disorders like stroke, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, things like this, though we are moving into other vertical sectors. And I think the experience that MindMaze has, and indeed that I have in other companies that I've worked for, is very relevant in today's transition into the AI singularity. Now, this concept of transition is plagued with concerns about risks, existential risks of superintelligence, existential risks about the changes in the socio-economic makeup of our globe. So I'm going to address some of those and see how, in a small part perhaps, MindMaze is, is attempting to resolve those. And hopefully there are some lessons I can exchange with you, and maybe talk to you later at some date about how these lessons can be incorporated into your business practice. So without further ado, let's rattle through in the next 20 minutes, a little bit less, a few of these slides. So AI is booming. Uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers uh, indicate a potential contribution to the global economy of 15.7 trillion US dollars. That's a phenomenal number. We'll look into that. And there's this concept of the timeline, that we're approaching a singularity in, in history that we call the singularity event, where our artificial intelligence will evolve into super intelligence, intelligence with generic capabilities at the levels and perhaps beyond the levels of humankind. An amazing science fiction-like concept, but we're making the early steps of that and the horizon, the data by which this may arrive, is debated. We're going to look at that. And we're going to look at some of the risks and some of the concerns in this space. So let's just talk about that number from PricewaterhouseCoopers. And others echo this expansion of opportunity that AI can bring to us. The number is, by 2030, which is what, some 11 years from now, less, 10 years from now, very shortly, the number of the contribution is $15.7 trillion. Just to give you a bit of perspective of how big that number is. In the whole history of humankind, and here I am in Turkey where many archaeologists and anthropologists believe mankind made its first civilized steps. In all of that history, the amount of gold that has been mined is less than half of this figure that AI is purported to be able to contribute. Twice the amount of gold ever mined. That's a phenomenal number. It gives perspective, I believe. Now, where are the potential for AI to make a contribution? Well, to be honest, it's across many sectors. 
but perhaps the largest contributions are in transportation, automotive, and transportation and logistics, but healthcare is, is argued by many consultants to be the number one area, vertical, where AI can make a contribution. And there are some real needs. That's a solution concept. I'll talk about the problem which comes before the solution. But before I do, I just want to talk about this concept of the horizon. And I call it an artificial horizon because it seems that we've been predicting the arrival of artificial generic intelligence to be like 10 or 15 years away for the last 30 or 40 years. When I did my work on my PhD, people were talking in the late 1980s and 90s that AI would be delivering functionality in 10 or 15 years at human level. Well, that was wrong, apart from in a narrow domain, but certainly not generically. And so what this graph of expert opinion is showing is that it's every 10 years, it moves 10 years away. So we get to 2000 and it's 2010. We get to 2010, it's 2020. Here we are, 2019, 2020. People, some people, some optimists are saying 2030. Some pessimists are saying never. My opinion is that the acceleration and the consensus of, of expertise is now clustering, you can see the cluster, of around 2035, 2040. So many of us in this room, not necessarily all of us, will be here when the singularity event occurs. Perhaps the most important event in human history where, let us call it beings, will have super intelligence. And that brings a lot of concerns. So we've talked and you've heard people talk about industrial revolutions. There are, we're purported to be in the fourth industrial revolution right now where we're building cyber-physical systems, integration of AI and robotics and Internet of Things, bringing them together to build smart factories, etc. Yes, that's here. But the real impact of AI and intelligence is yet to really manifest itself. We are seeing some early indications now where AI in image recognition of health images, whether they be X-rays or fMRI images, are being diagnosed with equal or superior capability than human radiologists. That's here and now. Many of you will have heard of the Google AlphaGo, and in many games now, not just <laughs> Go, but in dozens of games, AI outperforms humans. And the impact of that, not just on industry, but all verticals, will be profound. In the healthcare model, this also follows a similar, how can I say, division. As we've developed our industrial practices, healthcare and many other verticals have had parallel journeys. And we are now looking about building out a new healthcare model based upon personalization. Whenever I come across AI problems, I'm looking for four areas where AI can impact. That is in productivity, in personalization, in quality, and in discovery. We could spend more time talking about that, but we don't have too much, so I'll proceed. So again, it's a deep level slide. These slides, I understand, will be made available through the organizers, and you'll be able to go through them at a slower pace. And if you wish to question me, contact me. Please feel free to do so. But the singularity in that bottom right-hand corner is this rapid takeoff of machine intelligence. 
which is, will be around 2030, 2040, exceeding human um, performance in many respects and perhaps generally. So we live in exciting times. And if you can read the quotation of the author, Terry Pratchett, there, that says, exciting times is a kind of curse. I mean, he made this joke about, may you live in interesting times, or may you come under the attention of those in authority, and may the gods give you everything you ask. Such things sound nice, but behind them, there is the potential for them so disrupting. I mean, revolutions, industrial or healthcare revolutions, are disrupting factors of the highest degree. And if we're not careful, if we attempt a business as usual transformation, there will be trouble ahead. So we need to learn the lessons of history and not repeat the errors of the past. And that's hard when you're dealing with new and innovative technologies because the past isn't necessarily going to be the same and healthy guide to the future. But we have to try. We have to use what intelligence we have to be able to mold the future that we want, that will serve our people, that will serve the interests of the globe to help resolve climate change, to help resolve poverty, to help resolve food crisis, etc., etc. These are the potential benefits that 15.7 trillion can support, but only if we focus and deliver according to some intelligent, rational plan. And I don't always see that, to be honest. So there's a lot of negativity as well, to, as well as positivity. I've been talking about positivity. Here is an article or a summary of, an, of a, the percentage of articles in the New York Times. The um, blue line represents optimistic articles regarding artificial intelligence. But the red line represents negative, pessimistic articles. And these are exponentially rising, meaning to say the interest and potential hype and potential fake news about AI is exploding. And that's not plateauing, that is increasing. So you can't watch the news today or read a newspaper without some concern, either positive or negative, about AI. And it's only going to get more. Now, there are some pundits, Gartner, a very well-respected market research company, talk about the hype cycle of emerging technologies. And I recommend you take a look at that, Google it up, it's very well represented in search engines. And there's this concept of uh, hype as expectations mount to a level and then will drop off. But actually AI, this is not the first manifestation of AI. It's like the second or third manifestation of AI. It's already had winters of disillusionment. Will it have another? Are we at the beginning of this hype curve or at the end? I think the answer is in some forms of AI, we're very well established, like search engines, which are only going to get better, but they're already very well established. Other aspects, certainly generic intelligence, we're at the beginning of that Martin curve. Tufa, uh, we're waiting for our president, so last two minutes if it's okay, possible. So Thank and, you. And I respect that. Sometimes AI is great, but sometimes scheduling is not always that intelligent. But anyway, just moving through, there are two types of um, risk. I, I claim one is profits of doom, the other one is doom of profits. Basically, you hear the words of people like Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking talking about the existential risk 
of AI. And you see many movies, sci-fi movies, that reinforce this paradigm. But my concern about those pundits is they're overhyping. They are bringing a psychological transformation um, of uh, human concerns into the AI space. The one that concerns me the most is the idea of rushing AI for profit motives only as opposed to social motives. And I think that is a concern. If we cede our moral authority to AI, that, there's a concern there. So I believe the long-term risk of AGI is manageable, but the short-term risk of unmanaged, naive application of AI is serious. So in mind maze, we have technology. I'm just going to show you very quickly and then leave the room or leave the stage. Um, basically, here's a video of work we're doing in terms of skeletal extraction. We're using this to understand the kinematic movement of people who are suffering neurological disorders like stroke, and by doing so, able to recommend therapy. I have a video, but I don't have time to go through it in detail. I do hope, for those of you who are interested, please take a look at this video. It shows that we are delivering. So the conclusions are, yes, there are ex existential risks, but I do not believe those are so serious that cannot be managed. The risks that we need to focus on are the short-term risks of running to AI as a tool for profitability without taking into account the social and cultural factors. I am under some time pressure, so I do apologize to you. And I do hope that if you have any questions, you can bring them to me later, either through email or directly. And please take a copy of my presentation from the organizers. And with that, I say thank you very much. Mr. Chupa, thank you. I have a question, if yes. it's possible. Well, the scientists are working heavily to improve uh, this robotics or yes. artificial intelligence. However, we become anxious uh, whether the artificial intelligence or robotics will take our jobs from our hands. Okay. Isn't it a great paradox? No, it, it, it's, it's a great paradox, but let, I have a quote I've used for that. <laughs> I want a future where robotic jobs, mundane, repetitive, boring jobs, are done by robots. So robotic jobs for robots. I want humans to have humane jobs. Jobs That's which solution. build That's up solution. humanity. <laughs> And it can be done. Okay, that's the solution. Thank you. But please don't go. Please stay with me a little oh, bit more on the sorry. stage because there's going to be. I was under a... time pressure. So. <laughs> I'm so sorry for cutting this, it's by okay. the way. That was an inspiring speech. Efendim, Martin Tupaya, Yapay Zeka Teknoloji Lideri, Mind Maze'in patronuna, Müsiad Üskurulu Başkanı, Dr. Oktay Dede, bugünün anısına plaketlerini takdim edecekler. So, Mr. Chupa, thank you once again. It's a great pleasure to have you here. And once again, it's a great honor 